Hey everybody, here we go again. I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna have this be a voiceover or a chat through. So typically when I'm messing around in my planners, I'm listening to TV, not so much watching it, but I usually have something on in the background. And so we're gonna see if the something on is my voice, if that'll work with me or not. But uh, I figured I'm, you know, again, just trying to do more filming and sharing and showing. And so I'm getting ready to put um, April in my Stalogy. So I've got three months fitting in here. Um, March didn't go all that well compared to a few of the other months as far as filling it up and chunking it. But that's just how it goes sometimes. I did pretty good on my dailies so I pulled my daily rings out for March and so I got that chunk there and every every day is done there so that's not too shabby but uh, I do want to set up things how I normally set them up and uh, look at that I melted my bookmark somehow interesting so what I do for every month is I pick one of the Coco Daisy single sheets I'm gonna do this side I pick that and I do pick one of the, I haven't picked it yet, so one of our little tabbies here. Let's see which one I want to do with this. And so, cute choices for it. Maybe last month. We're going to go with that little cute plaid. So picked that. And I just glue it in. I have a new glue stick. Um, I was just getting myself all ready, opening it, and decided I would open it with you guys because I wanted to talk about the fact that there are two, like, two sneaky purple of the Elmer's glue sticks. And... I didn't realize that and so I went and I got a whole packet I got a bit like a pack of three big ones and a whole pack of little guys in this size and these ones have the sticks to more surface it says goes on purple it says washable but there's another one that says in the big spot it says washable um, and I think it even says school or something like that Oh, so different. Um, not at all the same. Like, it would dry before I could even, like, do the whole page of getting glue on here. It would dry before I could get the paper on there. So, um, last, last month's is in there that way. And I ended up having to go through and use some other glue to get it down. It's actually stuck down pretty good since then. But, yeah, don't. Do not recommend, be careful when you're picking your glue stick. So the sticks to more surfaces, that is the one I like. Um, I found it in the Big Chunky. I just got this from Michaels. Um, they were clearly out of that one I was looking the other day. I did get this one. It's Craft Bond Extra Strength from the Elmers. It's not a purple one, it's a clear. Uh, I got that while I was waiting to I wasn't sure what size this was gonna be, but before I got this, I got this. And it's been working uh, really good too, so a um, couple options if you're looking for that. I have yet to have a problem with anything coming undone, like this, I mean, on that January's page, it's all in there. It's not coming out for same with this page too. Um, so I've been liking using this. And so, ow, kicking my trash can. All I want to mess around and do is I usually have a scrap of something. In this case, it's a big old scrap. And I just put the glue right on my Stalogy page. Right through there. And then I don't go all the way to the inside seam. I used to at times. Um, but I feel like you have to be so persnickety about exactly how it goes in that groove to make sure it grows nicely. So instead, I actually go to the little um, graph paper now. And so it leaves a little bit of a gap going through there, but that seems to be working really nice. Um, I did it with this month, I did it with that month, 
then I did it with that one. So all this year so far has done that way. Um, and yeah, it works really well. So good little press on there and boom, it's in. Now obviously I need to cut it because it's huge. I do try and cut this strip up off first. You never know when you'll use good scrappy strips. In my April video that I just posted not too long ago, um, yesterday, if I'm gonna be silly, I was deciding what to do with my sticker protectors, the sheets, because once I put my stickers in my sticker folder, and I've been playing with the stickers already, so they're, um, I just put them all in one. I ended up deciding, ta-da, for my little scraps, because I do tend to get, as I'm messing around the papers, I I won't probably keep these guys. They're like, they're just too small. But I found that anything on this kind of length, I will sometimes go back and play with. So that is gonna be a job for the sticker protector, um, which is nice to give it a job, so. And then, what I found, I round my edges, so I cut my Stalogy uh, to be a little thinner than what it comes. This is a B6, but I take the B6 and it's not a B6 slim, but I do take off just a smidge of the edge of the paper. So like the book was probably a little like here and I cut that off and then I do still round my edges. So I have a little round punch. This is my favorite guy. It works so good. I will have it linked below. It's like six bucks and I just got a new one. Um, but I've had my other one. Oh gosh, probably two years now maybe. And I have done four, see so yeah, two years, four stylogies. That might be right. Um, maybe five stylogies, but I have done that and then papers and all sorts. So it is a workhorse. Um, it also does really good on the vellum and acetate, which we'll be doing in a minute too, because that's part of this setup. So boom, there's, there's that page. Now I've been playing the last couple months. This one I did, I had this sticker um, from Life Illustrated that just went perfect with the cactus theme and it was like the right color. So that's all I decorated that page. I had like, I don't love this page. This one just didn't do it for me. Um, and it works, but just doesn't ring to me all that much. This month I decided I wanted to use one of the Traveler's Notebook cards. This one specifically. This one's really cute. It goes with the theme. And so I'm going to cut it for the page. Let's see here. I'm gonna measure really sophisticatedly and just go like that. I will go with straight edges with my cutting board. But, uh, but yeah, so I'm just going to shorten it up and then I'm around the edges and I am going to remember to put my tab in first this time so one of my biggest mistakes that I'll attempt to make is get too excited about the papers and the quotes and stuff and I'll end up gluing that in too fast but uh, I'm gonna remember to put this in first because I don't want this overlapping on this page I don't mind it on that side I just that's kind of cute, but this little color is going to get its own. And I'm going to debate on which glue to use to put the card in because it is thick paper and not going to the edge. I do feel like when it goes to the edge, it sticks a little better. The fact that these are stickers is still one of my favorite things. Sorry, I'm just going to make sure I match this. A little bit to the edge, a little off the edge. But all the die cuts being stickers ooh, is awesome because it makes this part easy. I've only had one that I've had trouble with on one of my simple dories that it just doesn't want to stay on there. And so I finally just got this the, the mini stapler out 
and, and gave it a couple punches on that one corner that it just refused to stick for some reason. Um, I tried adding more um, like stripe glue and it didn't like that either. So there must be something like on the paper, I think. But there we go with the tab. And then this guy can go in. And so let's, let's just glue him up. The only downside to playing with any glues is just not getting glue everywhere, but still getting your glue all the way on the edges. So I will keep that scrap piece of paper nice and handy. That way I can really make sure I get my edges because I don't want it peeling. Then just random in the middle, back out of the way, words in the right height, and I'm just kind of getting it in the center of things. The purple um, does dry clear, so don't have to worry about it smearing anywhere and then it and it dries pretty quick and once it's dry it's not sticky anymore so that is an advantage sometimes over the I like the Tomoe River um, glue roller but it will stay sticky for all the times so the glue stick has some advantages but boom that's that's the welcome page I do use let's find our stickers I am trying to be consistent and use the month at a glance. I have to check because it's different in my my simple dories used. My simple dories right now I'm using the the month with the year one. Um, that's been on these sheets every time, so that's been nice. So that's been going in my simple dory. But here in my stylogy, it's going to be the month at a glance. And I love using the tweezers to place the stickers. It has been a game changer. Um, being able to line that up. There's just something about the thickness of the, of the tip of the tweezers that keeps it off of there until you've got it lined up. And then I've been doing the trackers on the other side. And so in the center, and then literally you can just get that right lined up where you want it. Boom. All done. Now I am going to hand draw in a calendar on this page. It's important to do that first before I mess around with my vellum. I'm just gonna do it with my clenopen. And this is one that I do not mind squiggly lines. Like if it doesn't go perfect, I'm cool with it. I've embraced that part of my life. Four, five, okay, so we're gonna match this one. So it's one from the bottom, one from the side. And what I've, I used to just do this page as just the calendar, like just to have the calendar, more or less. Um, but I ended up or from the top, starting to do my little emoji trackers. It's one of the things from the Coffee Monster Co. that uh, a lot of people do is track their moods or just kind of do like a highlight of the day via sticker. Um, and it is fun. It's I've really really enjoyed doing it each month whether I play catch up with it and I've left notes in my rings. One of the things I'll kind of write on the back side is both my moods and my emoji tracker of the day. And that way, if things get kind of crazy, all right, what did I do? How is that not two, one, two, three, four, five, ah, shoot. Well, talking and counting are not always bedfellows. Look at that. So we got four, 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 and five. Um, four, five. And that's actually all I need. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so well, we've got a different size square this month. Is that going to drive me crazy because of how they fit in here? Mm, 
Hmm. And see, sometimes you run into dilemmas. It's going to leave a big bottom. And then they're so tiny. Yeah, I'm not going to like that. So, well, kicking a dachshund. Sorry, Barney. What you doing down there? Oh, wait. So, Barney is here. That means Michael, my brother, is here. Huh? Totally blowing my mind how I messed that up. Okay, so five is the right size square, so we just need to do these ones. So this should be curious how this ends up looking. I don't typically mind having the whiteout strips. It matches pretty good, but usually that's on a page that has a lot of words, so. Guess what we can do? We can post this for the Happy Accidents um, Challenge Day. I was writing that this morning of what the April April days are, and um, was wondering what it was gonna be. There it is already. So yes, okay, one, two, three, four, five squares. Four, five squares. Let's just get one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Three, four, five. And that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, there we go. So that's correct on the ups. Thankfully, we'll be covering it with stickers, so it uh, won't be that big of a deal. But, uh, and then three with. So like I said, so this this is my measurements to get this box right in the in the center of this page and the right kind of distances. If you haven't cut your stylogy shorter, your boxes may need to be a little different. Um, I think it's only I'm probably like two boxes maybe short on here. Um, so I'd probably just put one more box on like that side is all it would do but keep it in mind if you're inspired to play around with this kind of thing is there a direction do you find um, I have this left to right seems to work so much better for keeping the lines fairly straight like I said I'm not really getting picky here but uh, like up and down can you you know can you go right to left or maybe you're left-handed and it's different you have to toss that down in the comments for me and let me know which way which lines line direction can you get yours straighter we're not going for, for, for perfect perfection here but okay so that's those then what I'll do is I won't stamp with you guys today but I will grab a Tomoe marker and mark down I already actually, not, uh, Tombow, not Tomoe, Tombow marker for my title parts. Yeah. And this is just my little quick sloppy front font for this particular page. It works to capture it a little bit. And then I also, so I have from um, my little sticker makings, I do these little foiled numbers to go right on here. And let's see, we'll see how this will go if I can fast forward a little slap on. Number one thing is to make sure you know which day is starting your month. I for some reason, this particular sheet is missing one, which is fine because April only goes to 30. So I cut the 31 in half and uh, Jerry right it. But okay, let's fast forward this.
All right, and just like that, we're back. Um, hopefully I taught myself how to fast forward a video so you didn't have to go through that. It doesn't take terribly long, um, but uh, for those who aren't enjoying the glittery sparkles on there. Uh, cutting the 31 also helped me remember that there was only 30 days, so I didn't have to fuss about um, remembering to count. I did get a hair in one of those tapes, but that is the life we live here. So then I'd usually, for the days that don't have days in the month, I will take some washi and just decorate those days up a little bit. That way, I'll do this direction first. Um, it just makes it one, brings that theme in, makes it pretty. Here, we'll put it right over that, that dog here. How about that? Covers up the part of the oops that we had. You'll never even know it was there. So, see that one on top? So just kind of a little coordinating, nothing crazy. But uh, sometimes I'll throw in some of the die cut stickers too, or sticker stickers from the kits. But uh, I think this month we're just going to stick with just the drops and then uh, a plain color here. Just to bring that theme. little craft tip I've gotten over the years is uh, if you are a washi, washi lover user, I leave a piece of paper. It's actually a, a notebook of paper from Goulet Pens, but um, it's my stamp cleaning pad. It's my start a pen pad you know if your pen gets kind of dry for a second you've got to, you know do that scribbly thing i just keep a little pad over there for quick notes any of that kind of stuff and what i do when i'm messing around with a whole bunch of washi is i take those little ends that you just saw and i'll stick them over there in a little pile until it gets thick and then i can toss it um, but that saves me i am a clip it i mean you saw me do my corners and just toss it on the floor i keep uh, a sweepy mop and do some vacuuming um but in the meantime when i'm in the zone i don't want to say think about cleaning so i just toss it but the washi tape will end up sticking to my floor <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want that so that's been my trick is just to kind of if I can capture that if I can't twirl it together or stick it to itself um, then I'll just stick it over there and toss it together okay so our Omodi a day page is done I will end up putting uh, yesterday's and today's sticker on here and I will do a stamp of the month I don't think I'll end up using no they're a little big so I won't I probably won't use the die cuts but uh, I will put that on there and then I like to add to this page is a piece of acetate and a piece of vellum it's really fun each month some of the months I will so this January I copied one of the papers of January on vellum and then I copied one of the papers and turned it to black and white uh, and uh, did some foiling on it and so that came out really fun and a little extra extra special for it and so and layered it together and then let's see February I had this floral acetate that's all foiled and gorgeous I already had that one done and so then I did the free paper that was with last month and I did that on vellum so to, for that overlay and then March, again, it was the acetate I already had um, that has some constellations on it, which is really cute. And then I did, again, the free paper on that one. So that's how I end up doing those. For this month, for April, I don't think I did the free paper. I actually, no, I did. I copied um, one of the papers from the kit. So I actually copied two papers from the kit and was going to kind of decide and then my acetate I'm gonna use this month is actually a jelly prints that I was goofing around with I did the cover of my 
disc bound. So I got a happy planner on sale at Michael's. And uh, it came with just you know generic little happy player planner cover, but I wanted something a little bit more special, and so I did this um, jelly print. And when I was messing around with the circle template, I ended up making a few different sheets to use because like I've got the front like that, and then the back is another one I did that had a little bit variation into the colors, which I am. I'm in love with how that ended up looking and it's actually got me to start really using this too so but uh, I was like hmm it's acrylic paint and acrylic paint can stick to plastic so would it do it on the acetate and so I was able to make this kind of funky one it came out a lot more yellow than I personally would normally do and then the kit came out and I was like, oh, well, this match is beautiful. But I don't know if I wanna do it over, over the butterflies. This was my debate that I was having, is over the butterflies or over the other dots. Or even if there was gonna be another way to do what I wanted to do. Um, and now, now I'm trying to decide if I even wanna do the acetate or if I'll stick it to acetate and something else. No, we're gonna do acetate. Okay, so this is gonna take a little bit of chopping. Um, I'm gonna get that out of my way and bring over, this is the ridiculousness of it all. I really need to do a lot more tippins with this stuff because this entire, it is a um, Cheek Sparrow Classic Evanwood or rather I turned it into a classic when I stole his pockets for another one but I have it completely filled with all sorts of stuff to add to my journals that I keep being like it's too pretty I have to keep it for for me forever so I need to really get in here and start um, adding to to my book but what comes in handy by having them here is that I know I have some that are already the right size so when I put it in here I know that that tips in just fine I do it tends to be a little shorter and I don't mind that um, but right to the edge and then I will do the corners when I know which direction I want it so I'm just gonna steal I'm just gonna make sure that's the one that I feel most confident about um, or if there might be a slightly taller one maybe this emoji one is a little bit taller yeah so let's go with this this emoji one, it's a little bit taller. Okay, so I'll move my stash out of the way. It's ridiculous. Um, okay, and so then let's do the vellum first. What I'll do is I will just find a spot of the butterflies that I like. Try not to like chop any in half if I don't really have to. Can I capture that one over there? I can, okay, perfect. And then with the pen, the cool part about acetate and vellum chopping is that unlike solid paper, I don't have to make sure that my measurement lines go all the way to the edge of the paper to help line it up. It can be smack dab in the middle like that, no problem. And then for this side, I am, so this is a trick too for extending your paper lives. I'm gonna go right to the print edge so I know that that's one line to go. That way when I cut it, I can get that strip of vellum and that will add a nice texture piece that I can use that strip. I can tear it or do something like that when I'm playing with layers and messing around with my memory keeping. Um, it's a nice it'll stick in there with the rest of its extra paper friends. Okay, so this side we said we're doing right to the pattern. I've been happy with my Cricut cutter. This just came, like we got a bundle when the when one of the newer Cricuts was like Christmas or something like that. My mom and I decided that yes, we wanted to play with it. And so we took advantage of the bundle that came with you know a couple mats and a few tools and stuff like that. Uh, I've been pretty happy with it, but I ordered another one for my mom, and uh, it's like slightly crooked. It's kind of weird, um, but it it ha I don't know. She it's we've yet to really get like straight cuts from it. So 
I've had a couple, like our office, we've had a couple different um, cutters in the past that have different you know, brands and stuff like that, but uh, they've got different replacers. Okay, so now here's one of the dilemmas when I get to where like it's my lines don't match up. So I don't want to cut it crooked if I don't have to. So what we'll do is that side. Then I'll cut these so I have, I know I have a straight angle as much as possible. And then we'll get to the other side. But anyway, so if you have a good cutter that you like, drop that down below and we will just making sure, you know, eight, measure twice, right? That's the rule. Measure twice, cut once. We'll see about that. How does that work with this one? No, oh, it is just a little funky crooked on there. That's weird. But uh, yeah, anyway, if you have a cutter that you like, recommend that does good with papers and can do things fairly straight, uh, let me know because you never know when I might need another one. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing with the acetate. Get that out of my way. Find our measurer. That is another thing too when you're playing around. Try not to measure from your newest cuts. Like try and have a template one and always double check your template one the way I did too. I have had where I'm like, if this one is ever so slightly smaller than this one, you will get that carrying on. And so it'll get a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. Okay, so I am gonna get two out of this, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna cut the other side yet. But that is cute. I kind of like this like bottomy ones where they don't, they're not all full circles. With acetate, not all pens will do the trick. I have found that my Klenna does just fine with the, the, the refill that I've got in it, which is just the, the what it recommends on Jet Pens refill. Uh, I have found that it does it just fine. It will, it will rub right off. It's not permanent on there by any means, but it stays on there long enough for me to at least cut this to the size that I want. I had a bit of a choice when playing with this acetate on if I wanted the textured side or the smoother side out. I am choosing to do the smoother side out mainly because I really like the way that they have this side has cool colors. Um, showing through versus on that side it's not so much so we'll take advantage of that for this more one-sided spread boom just like that okay now the question doesn't really have to be asked for this because it has an up and a down i'm going to do the corners here but the vellum did we already kind of choose we did i like that same thing just punching it and so I did I, I got this new replacement because while it was doing paper just fine that was where it was having or showing its age should we say um, was on the acetate it wasn't quite cutting it all the way so I kept it still because it's still good on regular paper um, not necessarily like thin paper like the Tomoe River paper is almost needs that sharp edge as well, but uh, but regular paper it was doing just fine. So for my little tippins, I do the Doxana, I think I'm saying her own name right, style, and that is that I just put some tape right on the edge. For this particular project, I do clear, just regular old Scotch tape. Um, for other fun tippins, I can do colored washi and stuff like that. But this one, I want all the fun in 
the outlines that are already there. Then I do my ruler so that way I can really stick this sucker right in that groove. One thing that I do tend to forget, kind of like that tab scenario, is really I should do the, the calendar and the vellum and the acetate before I put that guy on. And maybe next month will be the month I remember. Because now the tape is over the image. It's clear tape. It's not that big of a deal. If, you're, if that's something that would bother you. I literally haven't thought about last month's doing the same thing all month. But I thought about it while I was doing it. So it clearly doesn't bother me as much as I think it's going to bother me right now. But it's, a, it's food for thought. Whoa! Just trim this right up to the papers because it's one of the reasons I do the shorter, slightly shorter than page, is that right there for, for the edges, is that it helps it not go over. All right, and push it, really push it in there and then put it up there. And that way you don't have it, the tape's not sticking out the edges at all. Anything that I can do to avoid having sticky pieces, anywhere because if it's sticky it's gonna get dug um so the least sticky we can be is gonna be our friend for sure but there you go so that has our fun uh acetate and vellum for april and then april's front part now the rest of my setup is i swivel here and get it out because i forgot about it put these monthly stickers. These are from, hmm, this is a new one for me. Is it Allie Edwards maybe? She might be the one. Uh oh, let me not put it back in here. So they are the Hello Goodbye stickers black they're big ha, there they are okay so I actually need to order more of these now because I totally messed up my first three months and the hello goodbye I had backwards I did the goodbye month first and then I was doing the hello month here and I didn't realize it until I went to do March and finally like read it all the way and so I ended up using another sticker and I just thankfully I put it right on top and you can't even tell, which is really nice. But I literally had it as hello January, goodbye February for February. And that was once I, once I saw it, there was no way that that could continue to live. Um, again, I'm not gonna do any stamping right now. I'm just messing with paper, but I will go here and I will do the hello April and goodbye March um, with stamps there. I have my stamps over here, but uh, we're not gonna get into that messy part just yet. Instead, we're going to take this out to add to our stash of stuff. I am changing my pen loop to match this month's kit. I changed my Ollie clip. This stays in here just fine. I swap covers quite often. Uh, and this is pretty much what goes in there. I do have another um, folder from uh, the Coffee Monster Co. that every once in a while goes in here too. This is a custom, this was an Emma from Chic Sparrow that I have had way too much fun with and splattered and distressed and antique gelled and all sorts of stuff. But um, man, she feels good and is fun. But what we're gonna do is take this cover off and I do need to go over to my drawer here and get another cover because I'm not using the glitter one this month. So these are Lauren Phelps Designs covers. And uh, I like them a lot, help protect my salagy. I do decorate um, my salagy, so when I cut it down and I do the corners, I color the edges, which is fun, and then I decorate the front and the back, 
and seal it all up, add the volume, which I am on my seventh Stalogy, and probably a little bit, maybe not halfway through, maybe right at the halfway mark. We'll see if I can't fit six months in here. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's, it's super fun. I have no problem sticking it in like this, but it's nice to get a couple pockets and then, of course, playing around with the papers. All right, here is where I was talking about that advantage to vellum and that Samoe does not have that advantage. It is a solid paper, so we want to line her up. With curved edges, it's kind of tricky sometimes. You gotta make sure you get your, your angle right to get that side. Oh, that should give us our first cuts at least. Ooh, that's gonna make, it's like it's almost like a washi in itself. That is a scrap. So despite that being like extra skinny, it's, it's a, uh, I'm gonna put that in the stash. To see if we can't get that a job later. Both of those guys, both of those long guys. Okay. Now, do the length. Got our height. I'm going to lean towards the one side because if we can save cutting, we save options to mess up as well as we get a fatter strip of scrap and we save our blade. And these have nice replacements to them. I can, you just replace this little guy right here with the triangle, but uh, you know, hey, if you don't have to. Yeah, there we go, more scraps. All right, now to perfect this for my Stalogy, I will round the corners and then I also dip the bin. I punch, with this envelope punch, I punch out these grooves and that's because I put it on the string of my traveler's notebook and I don't want the string pushing in and wearing on the actual paper. And so I've actually done that with my cover from Lauren Phelps. I actually punched it, which you might may be able to see in there. I have the same thing punched out. So um, I put mine on the first string and so I, I played with it a handful of times before committing to, to punching it but uh, it works really well of not putting any pressure on the cover or the paper. And the Stalogy is just the right height for the B6 that it doesn't bother it much. But uh, we don't have a up or down, it's the only thing to pay attention to. And then line it up. I did. I do punches for my simple dory with this too, and so I actually just had to get a new board because this part just bam, a full explosion. And uh, the spring in it gave out, or the plastic gave out, and the spring will not let it sit in there. So um, I had to get myself a new one. That was the first break of no spend this year, and then it's uh, it's gone on from there. All right, so I do. I add this little. Um, foiled calendar from the style planner and I've just been sticking it kind of in here it's very clear thin paper but then it's got the fun foiled dates and so it's been kind of fun to toss it right in the front of the planner cover and give it a little bit of a job covers all done and ready and so to get this fat fatty in there you just take and hold on to the insides and flip the cover. It's another reason that I like to doll up the cover and do all the bits and pieces to make sure it's nice and sturdy. Um, so that way you can kind of bend around it a little bit. Then stick a little of the front, a little of the back, or you know, opposite of the words coming out of my mouth. 
And then it's just a wiggly process. The Lauren Phelps are like perfectly sized for these, which means this one in particular, the Stellagy I did, my, um, my tape to do the decorations must have made it just a smidge taller and so it just fits. There you go. It's all dressed up and ready to go. And, uh, and yeah, then we've got our, I'll do some stamping there. Got her, it's a good day to have a good day, which I think is fabulous. Our acetate vellum monthly page. And then I have already stuck in, sneaky sneaky when the power died, um, my trackers. So I do a handful of different trackers in the month. And then now I can dive right into filling it out for some memory keeping, daily journaling, all that jazz. Thanks so much for sticking with me through that whole process. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in more videos.